hi guys you're welcome back to another tutorial video in this video we're learning how to make this dress but with a little twist we're going to be concentrating on the top pattern the blouse area and not the skirt the customer wanted an alteration for the skirt so let us learn how to do this now this is my pattern paper right here and then the measurements i'm going to be using are the my customer is a plus size so her bust is um 45 her waist is 38 and her under bust is the same 38 so now these are the measurements i'll be working with and let's get right into this video So as always, I fold my pattern paper into two, leaving one side for the front and the other side for the back. And I'm going to rule a line to demarcate it and show us what I really mean. Now that blouse um, didn't stop at the half length it has a little bit of length for that under bust corset that you see there so i'm going to be using length 20 and also add two inches for the front side which means i'm going to be using length 22 for the front because the front is it has a little bit of basque that's the reason why i'm using 22 for the front but for the back i'm going to be using 20 inches now her under bust is 16 her um, bust point is 11 and the upper chest line I'm using 6 inches. Pay close attention to how we cut the front of this, um, this blouse because it's kind of different. It's, it has um, bustier and also has corset. So just pay close attention. Okay, I'm going ahead to label my upper chest line, bust point, under bust, and this is my blouse length, or you call it the top length. Now, because my blouse is supposed to be 20 inches exact, I'm going to use 20 inches as my waistline. So here, I've measured 20 inches. Yeah, and this will be my waistline. So guys, the next thing we need to do is to mark out our nipple to nipple measurement. Has is 8, which is 4 inches. If you have a small breast, yours might be 3 and a half, but has is 8, so I used 4 for her. Okay, now we are now we've marked out our nipple to nipple measurement. Let's go ahead and work on the under bust area. Now for the under bust area, we're just going to go ahead and impute all our measurements. Her waist is 38 divided by 4, which is 9.5. The under bust is also 38 divided by 4, which is 9.5. And, and I'm going to use my ruler to connect that line. And then get my French ruler and give it a curve into the top length, that basque curve. Now at the under bust area, I'm going to come up by one and a half inch because as you can see from that um, image, it has um, a little bit of something going on there at the breast area. So I'm going to just go in, go up by one and a half inch and then use my French curve to curve it into my under bust. So this is basically what I need for the under bust corset of the blouse now i'm going to cut it out i'm not taking out any that i'm just going to show you guys a different way of doing this you mustn't take out that to achieve what you need to achieve this is just the easier and the simple way i'm going to keep this here and then we work on the upper part of the front now 
for how you do your bustier you know how you do your bustier now i'm going to come to the under bust and take out about one and a half inch from both sides i'm taking out one and a half inch because my client is busty but if your client doesn't have breast one inch is okay but because my customer has embossed that's why i'm using one and a half inch um for her so i'm taking out one and a half inch from both sides and i'm using my french rule to my french curve to curve it out at the upper chest line i'm going to take out one inch from both sides and i'm also going to give it that bust curve using my french curve okay so to do the sweetheart neckline i'm going to come down by three inches and i'm going to curve my sweetheart and then the next thing we want to get is our armhole okay okay before we do that i'm going to measure my bust my bust divided by four which is 45 divided by 4 and at the under bust i'm going to measure my under bust divided by 4 plus the 3 inches we took out for that and then to get my armhole i'm going to come down by two and a half inches i want to use eight and a half as my armhole so i'm going to be using eight and a half remember the upper chest line is minus six so i placed my tape on minus six and then i measured eight and a half inch inches now at the upper chest line i'm going to measure by shoulder measurement which is eight inches and i'm going to use my curve ruler to curve it and i'm going to also use my stretch ruler okay at the armhole line i'm going to measure exactly what i have at my bust but then i'm going to add half inch to it and i'm going to connect my lines this way now I'll give this a curve you don't want to be having a sharp edge when you cut it so just smoothing it out and yeah guys this is basically it for the upper area we're going to now go ahead and cut it is there any other thing okay yeah the next thing we need to work on is our bust that so i'm going to at the bust point i'm going to take out half inch from both sides and i'm going to slide it in into the you know into the bust point line and yeah we're done let's cut it guys this is a very quiet, a very simple and easy tutorial. I'm just trying to like make it as simple as possible. There are other ways to do this though, but this is me giving you the simple method. okay so here i'm trying to fold my dart yeah to eliminate that um the stuff that i'm supposed to cut out so instead of just cutting it out i'm just going to fold it in yeah guys this is it this is what we have So this is what we have for our front pattern. Now let's work on the back. So for the back pattern, we're going to go ahead and 
mark out all those um what's it called measurements that we use remember we used 20 inches as our waistline for this one so the back measurement is going to also start from 20 inches remember i told you that the reason why i made the front 22 is because of that basque that the front side has but the back doesn't have a basque so we're going to be using 20 inches for the back 11 inches for our bust point and 16 7 inches for our upper back line And this is my post point this is my upper back line and this is my waist or my top length for the back now i'm going to take this um the under bust corset and then the side front place them together to measure what i have um from the armhole to the waistline and I think I have about 10 inches, so I'm going to go ahead. I have about 10 and a half inches, so I'm going to go ahead and impute it at the back area. This is to make sure that my armhole, my back armhole is matching with my front armhole. So now that is my armhole line. Now the next thing that I want to do now is to impute my body measurements. My client's bust is 45 divided by 2 by 4 which is about 11.25 and then the waist is 38 and I'm going to go ahead and use my ruler to connect my lines all the way to my armhole line now remember i'm not adding any that allowance to this pattern now at the upper back line i'm going to impute my shoulder measurement which is eight inches and then i'm going to use my french curve to give my armhole a curve And then again, we, we don't need the back um, neckline to be straight. We need it to have a curve. So we're going to measure, um, extend our armhole line here. As you can see, this is me extending that armhole line so that my back neckline can also curve into that particular line. And yeah, I'm getting my French curve and then I'm curving into that line. okay so this is what we have the next thing remember we're going to be using um loops we're not um, adding zipper or anything which is reason why we skip zipper allowance so we're going to go ahead and minus some inches from the back pattern so that when you use your loops to tie it it can cinch your waist and you know reduce a little bit of inches so i took two inches at the bust point and I'm going to take one and a half inch from the waistline. This is so that it can be slanted. So I'm going to slant it one and a half inch at the waistline and two inches at the bust point. I'm going to go ahead and roll it all the way to the back neckline. And this is it. Let's go ahead and cut. We're done. And you're going to be wondering i didn't add that yeah don't worry i don't really think that i need my that for this um but then when you're sewing you're going to see how i add my boning channels to it so this is what our patterns look like guys let's go ahead and cut it on fabric okay so these are my patterns on fabric the ones that are on fold, which is the underbust corset and the center front, I cut them on fold. I cut two, while the rest I cut four. Then I have gone ahead to iron my interfacing on top of them. I used hair stay interfacing. I cut um four because I cut four for the single ones and two for the ones on fold. 
because i'll be using the same fabric as my lining and as my um, main fabric here so this is it this is the under bust it's unfold and i have two of it and the single ones i have one of it so i gave half inch allowance all the way around as you can see for joining i gave half inch allowance all the way um around for joining it yeah that's the reason why i didn't add allowance to the the, pat the pattern because i know i'll be joining with half inch so when i'm cutting it on fabric i'm going to add half inch as my joining allowance all the way around so this is for this as you can see this one is also on fold this is my center front it's on fold while the other ones are single they are not on fold the next thing i cut is my sleeve for the sleeve i'm using a rectangle of 30 inches by 12 inches yeah this is yeah i got two of it and i'm not going to be focusing on the sleeve now because i know that i've already shown us how to do this kind of sleeve a lot a lot of times so let's continue with the blouse which is the main focus now to work on our boning channels you're going to pick your main fabric they may have already done one side and i'm going to be showing us how to do the other side so you're going to pick your main fabric and you're going to divide it into two you're going to fold it into two so that you can get the center line which is this line now that i have here so after you've gotten the center line you're going to measure what you have at one point at one part just like i have two i want to have two lines at each part apart from the center line so i'm going to now divide that into two um i'm going to measure here from this line here i'm going to measure what i have and i have about 10 inches then i i now um measure the distance that i want each line to have i used three and a half and i used six and a half so you can do whatever thing that works for you if you want to have about eight um boning channels or you want to have 10 or you want to have two just divide it as you want and continue with your work that's basically it there's no much formula here i want to have five boning channels for my front of which when you divide five one is already at the center that means you need to have two at both sides and that's the reason why i divided it like this so you're going to get your bias and you're going to sew it on top of these lines that you've drawn and then for the back this i did the same thing for the back this is my back um this is my back this is actually the main fabric not the line in the main fabric so i divided this into three as you can see and i did that for the same the other side and i'm also going to get my boning and also sew it on top of these lines so for the upper part of the front i i am using um gum warden for the padding yeah and this is what my padding looks like i've gone ahead to pad and i've also gone ahead to iron it properly so this is it as you can see it's standing firmly and so nice So after this, I'm going to join my under bust and the back to it. Now, this is actually the complete look. I'm not taking you guys through everything. I, I hope you understand what I'm explaining, but this is it. After you've joined the under bust and you join the this um the back to it. Now, as you can see, my side seams do not have boning, but that is what I'll be doing next. I'll go ahead and press it open. After ironing it, I'm going to get my bias tape and sew a boning channel to it because it needs to carry bone in too i truly hope you guys understand what i'm explaining because i'm not going to be showing you guys i'm this is more like a guide i'm not teaching you guys everything from start to finish which is why i'm not showing myself on the sewing machine but i really hope that as advanced students you guys already understand what i'm doing so i'm going to get my my bias tape and then i'm going to sew a boning channel on top of the side seams please make sure you iron and after ironing yeah ironing makes your work neat 
now onto the boning part i've already added boning for some of them and then i'm going to show you this is how you pass your bone and make sure that when you're passing your bone you're leaving half inch on top and half inch at the bottom for joining allowance because this bone the needle can also on top of it it's not so able so you need to leave space for turning the fabric with lining and then joining it to the skirt now also remember that your bone doesn't need to be sharp you need to use your lighter or your matches to burn to melt the edges of your bone so that it won't be very sharp and after you're done fixing all your bone in as you can see it's curvy so you're going to sprinkle water please sprinkle water it helps it if your iron is is steam iron and the iron is still good then fine for you but sprinkle water and then iron it flat Make sure you learn how to iron your bone in properly. So you're going to sprinkle enough water to it and then you're going to iron it. That's why I don't really understand how people can sew without light because it's kind of difficult like you need to iron all the way every step needs ironing so why will you sew a cloth without light it's kind of difficult my kind of tailor doesn't know how to sew without light okay so this is what i have here and as you can see i've already added my sleeve to the front part and whatever thing i made for the front part i also made for the back except the boning i didn't add boning to the lining so now i'm going to take my sleeves inside place my lining and my main fabric right side facing each other and i'm going to get my pins and hold them in um, hold them together in strategic places okay yeah so you're going to hold them together in strategic places put your sleeve inside the reason why you're holding them with pins is just to serve as a guide when you're sewing it yeah it helps you Okay, now after you're done doing this we're going to begin to sew from the bottom all the way through to the top to the armhole and down to the bottom again we're going to leave the down part open that's where we're going to flip from okay now this is it i've gone ahead to sew it and then after sewing it i added hemming gum all the way around so that when i iron it it can be flat and steady and then now i'm going to flip it over okay yeah so i flipped it over and as you can see my work is very neat i'm going to get um something pointy and i'm going to bring out all the edges that are stuck inside all the sharp edges and all that i'm going to make sure that i bring them out so that when I iron, I'm having a smooth finish. Okay, so now that we are done, we are going to go ahead and sprinkle water and iron. Please sprinkle water. If your steam iron is still working make sure that you're using it but my steam iron is spoiled that's the reason why i just get me a bottle and then i use it to sprinkle water so make sure that your ironing is okay you iron all of them you iron the the back the neckline the armhole the sweetheart you iron all of them and make sure that everything is flat and steady and yeah this is it our blouse is okay looking all dapper and fine 
um yeah this is it we're going to go ahead and attach the skirt to it uh, i think we're basically done with this tutorial shall but it's remaining one more thing to do this is my skirt i made a 360 degree flay and then i just added a slit to the front and then at the sides i've put notch at the sides at the skirt sides yeah the notch that i put are to indicate that the part that is carrying notch is the sides yeah because i haven't split it yet so i'm going to fold it into two this is so that we can work on that basque shape that we have we need to cut out some stuff from the front area now we're going to work on it so you're going to fold your your front your blouse into two as well you place your the side of your blouse at the sides of the skirts together and then you basically arrange it the way it's supposed to be and you get your chalk and you mark it out now after marking it out you know that this is what you have but you're not cutting exactly from this line you're going to be cutting half inch away for joining allowance yeah i know i should have gone ahead to mark the half inch for you guys but i'm not in new tailor so i already know my half inch so i'm just going to go ahead and cut it anyway and that is basically it okay the next thing i'm going to do is to open my zipper area for the back so i'm still going to fold in into two using the the notch as my guideline for the sides and then the side that has the slit is the front which is where we cut out as the back basque where we where why the other side is the back which is where i'm splitting right now for my zipper allowance and then the next thing i'll do is to add my zipper to it and then join my skirt and my blouse together so i believe you guys can do that one and this is what the complete looks look um is this is how the dress looks like this is it my dress is already um it's so fine um okay we're basically done with this tutorial please like my video and subscribe to my channel if this is the first time you're watching turn on your post notification bell so that youtube will notify you whenever i post